Before we go to our preaching time, I want to make a few comments on last week's sermon. We're right, they're wrong. It was about eternal security. We believe that when you're saved, you're kept saved by the power of God. It has nothing to do with your ability to hang on to it. You hang on to Christ, he does the rest. But, um, and I got more views than I normally do to my sermons. Uh, Brother Gene, huh, he gets a whole lot of views to his stuff. But uh, a few people posted comments on YouTube that they, they still haven't got a hold of it. They, they still think man's so bad, he can offend God, he can lose his salvation. And the idea of once saved, always saved is deception. It's a lie. And clearly they didn't pay attention to a single point I was trying to make in last <laughs> week's sermon. But um, let me address that, address that sentiment that somehow you can still lose your salvation. You can destroy what God has wrought in you. And this might even be a primer on dispensationalism. Moses told Israel, Deuteronomy 6, verse 25, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. We'll do exactly what he tells us to do, and it will result in our righteousness. Consider what the Bible says about Zacharias and Elizabeth, John the Baptist's parents. Still living in Old Testament times before the birth of Jesus, Luke 1, verse 6, they were both righteous before God. How? Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. That's how someone was identified as being righteous before the grace of God was brought by the Lord Jesus Christ. It was based upon his obedience to the law and the commandments. And it was very stringent. It had to be kept throughout your lifetime. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Ezekiel 18, verse 24. You could lose that righteous standing through sin in the Old Testament. David prayed, uh, Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I, uh, Psalm 51, verse 11. That was a possibility in the Old Testament. Your righteousness was measured by your degree of faithfulness to God's commandments, but it had to be kept throughout your lifetime. Yet in the New Testament we read, not by works of righteousness which we have done, amen, but according to his mercy he saved us, amen. by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, Titus 3, verse 5. It's the Holy Ghost that washes and regenerates and renews the sinner who comes to God by the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't do it, he does it. Amen. All you can do is the trusting. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, Amen. of his flesh, and of his bones. Ephesians 5, verses 29 and 30. Paul even tells believers, 2 Timothy 2, verse 13, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. The Lord Jesus would have to uh, cut, if, cut off his own hand, cut off his own finger to deny you your salvation. Metaphorically speaking, he's not going to do that. Once you belong to him, you belong to him and he belongs to you. If the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ now covers the guilt of your sin that you brought to Calvary when you were a sinner needing to be saved, and God only sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ on you now, he no longer sees your stain of sin, then uh, it's impossible to undo it. You're joined to him and he's joined to you. If you think that your weakness, your flesh, your giving in to temptation can undo the salvation that Christ has wrought in you, then clearly you don't believe in the grace of God to start with. 
you think you're stronger, more powerful than the power of the grace of Jesus Christ. And let me finish my remarks with this. It is not the work of the Holy Spirit that is driving you into the scriptures looking for a way to lose your salvation. Amen. You are being controlled by the devil or some unclean spirit. And I hate to be the bearer of that bad news.